Welcome to the Million Vegan Grandmothers podcast. And today I have Suzanne and Ted, and we're going to be talking about probably more than I had anticipated because I have two guests here today. And Suzanne Taylor um, really got our community going when she said that she um, we entered an essay contest that Suzanne put out that it's January 1st, 2024, and it's it's January 1st, 2050. And in January 1st, 2024, what did we do to save the world now that it is 2050 and we're living in a thriving, peaceful world? So what did we do? So Suzanne, thank you for being here. And Ted, thank you. I, I hear you're entering the contest. Tell us, Suzanne, what uh, brought the inspiration for this essay contest? Total frustration. Mm hmm I was putting out my own ideas in a landscape where nobody has ideas. We're terrifically good at um, analyzing what got us to this place, this right. terrible place that the world is in that I don't think we have any argument about. We don't have to catalog. Um, so we're really good about it. We chew on that. We, we, we write moving essays about how terrible we know who is. Uh, and then we have a, a, a thriving kind of thought form for how could it be if we were in the world we wanted to be in, if it were utopia, you know, how would it be? Oh, we have a lot of, how would education be? How would government be? We're, we're full of ideas about that. What we don't have is ideas for how to get from this terrible place to that pl good place. Uh, honestly, it's so um, shocking, actually that there aren't more ideas. Nobody's talking about that. There are long range things, you know, these utopian how the thing, and then they need a lot of funding and then they need a lot of time. No, what can we do now? We're in real danger. And, uh, you know, the world is so united now. We're one world of trade and uh, communication. And so we're vulnerable to being wiped out as one thing. We're not just little isolated yeah. stuff that can get in trouble here or there. We could, I mean, this could be humanity. And nobody's taking that seriously. So mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it was total frustration. I have a whole lot of ideas. I mean, if you went through my thing, I could answer my own essay contest brilliantly because <laughs> that's all I think about. How do we get from here to there mm -hmm. um, by we the people? It's because the government's not going to do it for us. Um, they're all serving funders rather than constituents. Right. And it, the world's just gotten imploded in this place. So, you know, I'm putting out ideas and looking for other people. And, and I thought, some, what can I do? Money talks. I mean, I may as well be in the world I live in. So I thought, if I put out some money for ideas, how about that? <laughs> well, son of a gun. I mean, so far, knock wood, whatever. So far, so good. It's been, you know, a lot of, first of all, people say, just like, like Ted, how, what a good idea. Oh, some reaction. How wonderful. And I've got like 10 submissions already. It's just been out there a few days. How wow. can people think so fast? So, <laughs> and then, uh, okay, what did I do? What did I do? I'm in communication with all these people. Oh, this is great. Oh, I didn't know you were doing that. Oh, this is a wonderful thing. And I'm getting all this, this stuff. Oh my God, what am I going to do with it all? So that's a good problem. I'm happy to have this problem. <laughs> well. Well, yeah, you, you are the missing link for change, good change in the world, because everybody's been talking, but nobody's taken the long term perspective. And certainly no one has looked that far in the future and then look back and you think about what kind of world you want. And that's perfect. Uh, I mean, thinking of the kind of beautiful world you want yeah. and then taking the steps and also visualizing that it's already happened. And that and, and then you just and then you fall into it. Like all my angels tell me that we have a beautiful planet waiting for us. We just have to create it and step into it. So now we have to think of what, well, what kind of planet do we want? And then we take those steps between now and then and not a planet of tyranny and control of people suffering, endless wars. You know, we all know there's a lot of problems, but I think we can solve them out. As President Kennedy said, 
uh, back in the early 60s, men, people, women, we all created these problems and we should be able to fix them too. Well, you know, in the long range, um, evolution's arrow goes in the direction of progress, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I trust that that would be true, that we would work all these things out, but we may not have a long range. That's what's different now. Right. And right. You know, humanity has taken over evolution. We're we're manipulating genes and, you know, the very basics of life itself. Right. Uh, so it's in our hands. So right. hello. Well, let's, you know, mm -hmm. but but it needs it needs faster action <clears throat> than um, people are taking seriously. Uh, I, I say it needs it likely needs, you know, we, we could get into trouble on so many fronts, really radical, radical trouble. And um, I, it's just astonishing that the that grip that this uh, oligarchy has on us, where it's turned us into slaves, almost, you know, to yeah. to the money people. Uh, money's not the way to run the world. Love is the way to run the world. And um, so, getting something happen happening, and you know, also. You say to yourself, oh, my God, I'm just one little person. But, you know, one good idea could turn everything around. Just just one great idea. Mm -hmm. um, I even have a new one. <laughs> I don't know if we want to talk about that. But I, mm -hmm. I do have it. I always yesterday got a new idea. What could turn the world around? <laughs> so I don't know. Well, it, 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 the beautiful thing about your essay contest, Suzanne, is that there's many people practicing the law of attraction and positive psychology and focusing on what you want to create and visualizing that. And what you're doing is you're helping people because we have we really have two choices, you know. I mean, Marianne Williamson is running for president, and I studied her Course in Miracles many, you know many, many years ago. And if there's only love and fear, and fear isn't real, mm -hmm. love, then what you're doing with this essay contest is you're asking the people to focus on the love, the love based solutions, as opposed to the fear of the potential that we're in this ticking time bomb. Mm -hmm. And so that's important, because what can we create in a love based world, when we get to the tipping point, of enough of us focusing on the solution and love, which which is veganism, which is where the million vegan grandmothers started mm -hmm. gathering together, is mm -hmm. that grandmothers have this ferocious need to feed people and to make sure everyone is cared for and to protect their family and the children of all species, the grandchildren of all species. And we can't do that if we're shaming or angry or fear-based. It's a really healthy grandmother is a love-based grandmother. <laughs> so I now could... I want to, um, I don't know what the words are. Uh, like, oh my gosh, how did this happen? I just said, I, I have a new idea. It's a Marianne Williamson idea. Mm. And now you, you start talking about Marianne Williamson. <sighs> mm. So I just sent out to my mailing list and you'd have gotten it, it was supposed to go out yesterday and there was a glitch and whatever, and it went out today, um, of Marianne talking about Martin Luther King yesterday on Martin Luther King Day. It was so incredibly, oh, it's gonna, it just makes me cry to even think about it. It was so wonderful, mm. insightful about the world and, 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 and getting to the place where she said, you know, Martin Luther King called for the beloved community and i thought that's it marianne you take that over now it's you it's in your hands call for the beloved community because we don't have anything to rally around we right, don't right but in my little ideations i say we need a um coalition for the good but mm -hmm. that, what is that you know but rally around the beloved community that's something we could all we could hold us all and marianne's the perfect person to do that whether well, it doesn't matter if she gets elected to anything that could be her mission you know and that could change the world 
So I, I'm just, I'm just, I, you know, Marianne's an old friend of mine from mm -hmm. way back. And so I just emailing her saying, Marianne, that's your ticket. Get into the beloved community. And I, I just sent that out to, are you both on my mailing list? If you got it, you, you should have gotten I, it. I think I did. But actually I was writing a letter to you this morning. And then I looked at, at David's letter that he'd sent to me. And I didn't see the Zoom invitation until just, just a few minutes ago. I scrolled all the way down and I thought, oh my goodness. And I figured, 12 noon Edmonton. Well, that's in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do much publicizing of it because I thought it was a private sort of event. But then again, you know, everybody wants to okay. pop in. So well, I didn't quite know the parameters of it. Mm -hmm. um, so well, it wasn't like we, we didn't get the audience we went for. I didn't really go. I didn't go. Yeah, for, you didn't yeah, either, yeah. obviously. So here we are. Oh. But so nice that we're here, the three of us. <laughs> Well, I talked to I talked to Martin Luther King ex extensively over the weekend, and I, I I I aired two shows of his messages. Actually, he had a lot to say. Yeah, I know and, you bring in people on on your show. I was poking mm -hmm. around your radio show that I'm going to be on. So, um, yeah. so what, what do you get from? Well, he he said uh, he said that we're all family, and you have to look at the world not only now but in the future as family, and and. And I, and that was a big one, a big point for me. And so we're we're all saying the same thing, and we're and then President Kennedy came in, Jack Kennedy came in, and he said that once you people realize that we all have the spark of the supreme being or God within us, we'll stop fighting because if you fight somebody <coughs> who's got God within them, you're just hurting yourself. You know it's silly. There's and and then uh, uh, John Lennon uh, contacted me about three days ago. I was just waking up. And he said, would you do a program on peace? And I'll give you a bunch of messages. And I said, sure. So I did two two shows, two hours on his messages for the planet. And uh, I got that widely spread out there. So there's a lot of there's a lot of movement for that. And then I talked to uh, Mahatma Gandhi. I like Mr. Gandhi. And he said people, when he was alive, people would come up and say, well, I'm just one person. And Mahatma was... Gandhi was one person. He, he kicked out the British in 1947, at the time, the world power. Um, and so um, I took a bunch of notes here, too. Um, there's 80% um, of the ascension process is actually food related. So thank you for focusing on be vegetarianism, because that is actually a very big part of it. Yeah, true vegetarianism, which doesn't include dairy, because the dairy industry mm -hmm. is is quite a a horrific, um, horrific, very uh, abusive situation. So yeah, we'll just take that right out of our food system too. I, I have one entry in my um, essay contest already about how it was stopping, uh, you know, going vegan that saved the world. It's very well written. It's an incredibly important point. I'm not, I'm not vegan, but I'll go along with, if everybody else is, I'll do it, you know. Yeah. I don't want to do it as a protest because I like my hamburgers. But right. but if everybody's doing it, I absolutely support it because I think that's the a, a single thing sure. that could sure. substantially Suzanne? save us all, you know. Oh, absolutely. I can teach you a way to bless the meat if you want. <laughs> so there's no negativity. Uh, the cow spirits love it when I do it. So anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, right now we're just going to focus on veganism. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't really think we need to use any animals and, and partake in the slaughter and the. Right. And I'm totally supportive when the time comes in. And now, too, you know, I, I, I it's one of my <laughs> things is saying go vegan. And, and, you know, it's one of the ways that we could turn mm -hmm. it around. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I've been um, uh, uh, Albert Einstein and Dr. Emoto, Mr. Emoto both agree with you that love's most important and powerful force in the universe and you oh for sure everybody who knows anything yeah. knows that you know yeah, for sure. absolutely yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. i'm sorry but, for my throat i i woke up this morning with a frog in my throat so i well I, we don't know you're regular so it sounds okay <laughs> all right thank you but, but something so, that was said when you was talking tammy um about um sacred um I, I don't know, you went on and said a bunch of other things, but, um, you know, one of the things that in my world, not about the contest per se, but, uh, well, I do mention it in, in my little um, example uh, of what an essay, what a submission could be. I talk about the, to me, if I were writing it, 
I would deal with what I think would be the most transformative thing that could happen, and I would write it as if it had happened, which is that we take on a new creation story. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not sinners with a, supplicating to an outside God. Right. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, I like that. We're all we're, we're, we don't have God in us. We are God, just mm -hmm. like everything in the, the whole universe is sacred, you know, right. mm -hmm. and making ourselves, you know, supplicate to it is not the thing is it's to just glory in it. And, you know, if you feel that sense of uh, being a divine creature, you don't hurt each other. <coughs> you know, you mm -hmm. help the world. Uh, right. You're here to serve the planet. We're the only species that can actually do that. All the others are on instinct, but we can actually make yeah. wonderful things happen. And we should be so, and if if you feel that sense of pride or, or joy in being human, the privilege of being, that's it, the privilege of being human, mm -hmm. change everything if we all went around feeling that way. Uh, and this new creation story that's there for the, plucking or for the understanding mm -hmm. would, would do the uh, my my biggest mission is to teach the world turn the world into tune the world into the this uh new creation story uh which has us in an evolutionary situation not on a dead rock using it for our benefit but in mm -hmm. a situation where the whole universe is evolving so it started and then it evolved and we're all one thing inside that one humanity mm -hmm. and science mm -hmm. is our authentic authentication for that now, but mm -hmm. we're not paying attention. We're too stuck in the things that are, you know, material that have got us imploded. But um, it, it, in fact, this mm -hmm. new story would get everybody into a different vibe. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's a massive thing. That's one thing kind of, so it, my my biggest dedication is that humanity should understand this new story. In fact, I have a I'm producing a little animated uh, video to tell that story uh, as a tool, so that everybody who knows it can spread it all over. So that's my biggest ambition. Yeah, that's and perfect. Ted, thank you. And as Ted said, you know the the that that new story is very much food based, and so. It's not really a new story. It's an old story. It was Genesis 129. It was our original instruction to eat plants, mm -hmm. uh, seeds, and fruit-bearing trees. And mm -hmm. that was the original instruction. So it's just coming home. And if you must, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, well, I don't think I absolutely know that our new creation story is going to be um, Ahimsa. As one of our vegan grandmothers, Judy Carmen, writes her book, Homo Ahimsa, Who We Really Are, mm -hmm. and How We're Going to Save the World. She talks about a new species on Earth uh, instead of Homo uh, sapiens, which you know are supposed to be the wise ones or the intelligent mm -hmm. ones, where which didn't actually work out. We're <laughs> going to be Homo ahimsas, and and in that story, uh, it's an absolute world of no harm. And I believe that if it's twenty fifty. Um, and the world has gone vegan long before now, then we might as well all just join <laughs> whole food vegan and, and, uh, live in the vibration of, um, yeah, not shutting anything down in our systems. Mm. So I'm grateful for that. A lot of the, a lot of the spirits who destroyed Atlantis 12,500 years ago, who were emphasizing material gain and technology and excluding the love from their various lives, they ended up destroying that civilization then we had to start all over again. And some of them are back here today and they're making the same mistakes. Some have learned and some haven't. So I agree with you, a creation, a new creation story would be absolutely spot on, yeah. Ted, where <laughs> okay. do you get, where do you place Atlantis? You see the authority on all things unknown. <laughs> well, I've been, I've been talking to angels on the other side for over 30 years and, and um, they, they give me truth. <laughs> and, uh, um, and it's it's funny. I came from a psychic family. It was normal to talk to angels on the other side, mm. and as well as spirits. There's no such thing as people dying. They're still alive. They're just in a different form. And everything that they tell me is 100% correct. And um, so I follow. I saw follow spirit, and I follow God. Believe in God and angels. So that's how I run my life. <laughs> well, what a sweet world you live in. So where was Atlantis? 
uh, Atlantis was um, uh, it was out in the out in the Atlantic Ocean. It was between um, uh, Florida. Um, Bimini was one part of it there, and it went all the way to off the coast of um, the Canary Islands was actually part of it at one time. And it had three stages. At one point, it was a very large continent. Then they had a, a series of earthquakes about 50,000 years ago, where some of it broke off into the Atlantic. And then they had a final thing going underneath the sea 12,500 years ago. And they had violated cosmic law by... Um, not loving nature. And then they also did a lot of DNA manipulation with us humans and they mixed animal and human DNA to create slaves. That's how they created mermaids and mermen. And, and then there was a small oligarchy of, of civil and military leaders who wanted to control the world and they were playing around with nuclear technology and crystal technology. And they ended up destroying much of the planet in a series of thermal nuclear explosions. And that evidence is out there today. If you look like the Sahara Desert at one time was full of tropical areas and it was completely wiped out by thermal nuclear bombs. There's areas of the Southwest, including New Mexico and Arizona and the United States, which were wiped out back then. There's, there's the Gobi Desert in uh, far Eastern uh, Asia, China and Russia also wiped out. So these memories are here. And a lot of, a lot of the people alive today I have that memory of that tremendous um, uh, cataclysm. And uh, uh, Halloween, <coughs> uh, the, the explosion of the, the uh, destruction of Atlantis happened on Halloween, October 31st, 12,500 years ago. And the next day was a commemoration, All Souls Day was a commemoration of all those 64 million souls that were destroyed. It's a long story, everything that happened. Really? <laughs> but, but you know, the, the troubling thing is, is that there's a lot of souls out there who still have that old creation story of destruction in their subconscious. And they want to repeat it again. Not everyone, but a lot of them. But we're going to make it. And your work in creating a new story is essential to the survival of this planet, I think. And the yeah, Kogis. I, yeah, I agree. It's like, you know, yeah. if you can think of, we, we need something so massive that you want to think about really um, significant yeah. kinds of things. Yeah. So not yeah. And the, things. yeah. The, 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 co the Koki said, we've got six months. Yeah. That's what they said a couple of weeks ago. Well, that's another incentive to um, hustle, yeah. you know, another, you know, as, as, yeah. as, it's, also, it's also interesting just to me that as I get older, I get bolder. It's like the less time I have the, the more outrageous I become. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I got to do it now or never. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But right. you know, I just, I, I just retain the idea that I can matter. I don't think I'm megalomaniacal. It's not like I know it. You know, it's not like I, hey, I'm, I'm your supreme leader. You know, but I'm, I right. maintain the if one good idea. Right. You know, could turn the trick, and we need that. We right. need think that way so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well you're sure breath of fresh fresh air both of you are because i think the same thoughts and i thought what the heck can we do but visualizing the future is a really good way to do it and i'm happy to provide as much publicity as you want so oh you know. well as much yeah. as you can give is what i want <laughs> right <laughs> all right no you worries know, one of the one of the challenges to me is getting this thing circulated because i am not a big organization and I do have a big one behind me, which is Scientific and Medical Network. Uh, but it was too complicated for them to do this as their project. So right. I'm they're doing it. They're featuring their members, private members. So they give me a lot of support uh, yeah. featuring my project. Um, but truth, but, but in the end, I, you know, I'm not a big organization. And I'm just fingers crossed that this thing has its own momentum and that it gets out there beyond my capacities uh to get it shared you know so so far so good it seems like it has a certain but i believe me i'm i think about it all the time now who can i contact now whose podcast can i get on what a, you know i and like oh the clock not the clock but you know it's i have to do this quickly quickly get it out there <laughs> right 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 well i got some good ideas by the way on who we can get a hold of that'll give you some good publicity so get me leonard um, cohen 
I'm sorry. <laughs> Get me Leonard Cohen. <laughs> okay, I'll try. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, the, world, the, world a, the world became a less sweet place when he left. I was so madly in love with him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. From afar. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's more. You know, the good news is that there's more good people than bad out there. And I believe that's true. I yeah. it has to be true. It has to be true. Yeah. I've got so, several different phones, and then when one rings, people keep calling me. That's okay. And I'm Ted, busy right now. A few minutes. Our podcasts are usually around 30 minutes. I wonder, Suzanne, if you could let people know your your links will be underneath, uh, how people can get a hold of you, how they can join the contest, and, um, and some of the ways that you see the world is going to be saved. And then, Ted, could you join in after? Sure, I'd love to. I'd love yeah. to. Well, if you post my link, you know, everything's there. Um, the link where I announced um, the contest, uh, which mm -hmm. tell, tells you everything about what you need for the submission and the button to submit and what have you. Um, I, 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 as I say, I've gotten about 10 submissions and they're all different. And, and uh -huh. they're so interesting. People have great, I, I am shocked that people have good ideas because I've been, trolling around looking for good ideas that are floating around and I can't find any and now uh, you know it, in terms of uh, rather than tell you what's come in because it's coming 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 uh, in terms of the thoughts that I have um, we don't have a we're all gadflies us us enlightened people we're poking away and individually everybody's got their <clears throat> Their, their road that they're on and uh we're, we're we're not organized we're we're not together we we have no power uh we have the internet why don't why don't we just and and i i, I think i mentioned you could call it a coalition for the good whatever some place where all the people who are on the positive side of life all right so now you have a a force that has it's like taking to the streets Take to the internet, you know, get ourselves to be a huge for huge force on the internet. Then we need, we need a, a voice. We need a spokesperson. How do we get that? And I have a whole idea for how we could get a wisdom council. One outstanding person goes first. <coughs> Oprah, you know, whatever. She picks the second person. <clears throat> Those two pick the third person. The three pick etc until so it's somewhat democratic you might say um and so then we have this body of people and then a third leg of that kind of container uh is a suggestion box mm -hmm. that anybody can put things into can have conversation there about them great the, the, that's the source of things that go to the wisdom council for how about considering this now there are two kind of categories of the things that we the people and the council and whatever could do, could do one is government there are certain things you have to have government for it we the people can't do it like i think of things like some kind of ubi universal basic income for everybody every civilized person in the world because it's this um terrible income gap kind of thing that is just destroying us we've just got to get rid of uh all the suffering and the poverty and what have you. So bring everybody up to survival level. Um, but that would be our force of our coalition for the good pr presses like in the streets. But then there are other things like that we can actually do to change the, the atmosphere. Like for instance, I, I don't know if you remember, but um, the ice bucket challenge that swept the world three years ago maybe four years ago uh everybody was pouring ice cubes on their heads it was for mls uh mm -hmm. lou gehrig's disease als mm -hmm. um fun fundraising for als they they raised millions of dollars for research mm -hmm. um well how about we we also make something happen which is people do fireside chats talking to humanity humans talking to other humans like you know, calling mm -hmm. us to our best mm -hmm. and flood the internet, flood social network, everywhere you turn, someone just like with the ice bucket <laughs> challenge, someone is calling you to love, you know? Um, 
And then a whole bunch of other things to kind of change the atmosphere that we can do if we all decide to do it, you know. And uh, so I, it's kind of a, you know, fitted together plan of uh, different, um, cha- different, different aspects of things that if, 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 like, if my plan were taken seriously, we'd have something to really talk about h- how we might really turn things around. Um, but I couldn't get anybody talking about it uh, as I was putting mm-hmm. things out. I have some pretty good influence with high, high folk, uh, thought shapers, and I can get them to come to something once. But to get them to really turn into a think tank and think together, not too busy, got to got to handle their own things. Um, so again, and that's brought me up to the, okay, now what? You know, they're not going to talk to each other. We're not going to figure it out together. What can I do now? So I thought, well, let's, let's call to the public, you know, get some ideas mm-hmm. in. So here we are. <laughs> great. Thank you, Susan. That's great. I'm How gonna can turn. get a hold of you and what would you like to your final uh, words here today on how you feel we can come together? Well, it started my own experience with this was back in um, on July 25th, 2014, when I was broadcasting out of Seattle and I had Dr. Masir Ramono on my show. And at the time, the Palestinians and the Israelis were fighting in the Gaza Strip. And um, so I asked Dr. Emoto in the middle of the show, I said, well, you know, your work with water crystals is great, but could it create world peace? And he said, yes. And I said, okay, let's meditate for five minutes. Send lots of love and love, light light and love to the Palestinians and the Israelis for a 12 hour ceasefire so they could exchange food and medical supplies. And that was at 3.30 PM Pacific time in Seattle. So then I went where I was staying at it at 8 30 p.m i flipped on the television where i was staying at and cnn was on i don't watch cnn now but it was on back then and right at the bottom of the screen suzanne and tammy they had a little red banner that said that the israelis and the palestinians had just agreed to a 12-hour ceasefire spontaneously no plans it just happened and at the time i had about 30 40 000 listeners and dr moda meditated with us and it worked And that led to further peace talks. Initially, everything calmed down. They stopped fighting. So I've been doing that now for the past six weeks, almost on every show for Gaza and the Ukraine. And if you notice, they have had sporadic uh, ceasefires. And I think it has helped. Um, There's a university called Maharishi University, a TM university in Fairfield, Iowa. And they do the same thing. They'll have meditations. During the Atlantean time, they had millions of people meditating for world peace all kinds of things. That would be a simple thing to do. Doesn't cost anything. Five, 10 minutes of your time, easy to do. That's what I do on my show now for world peace. <clears throat> the other thing is um, um, prayer. We are all powerful spiritual beings. And when we tie into the tie into the creator, the supreme being, the entity, who, the soul that created all that there is. And because love is the most powerful and important force in the universe, if you tie into that, and send love and light even to your enemies that will have a positive effect and that's a simple thing to do immediate and it usually works very quickly Um, longer term is a lot of things we can do but um, there's a whole war machine that was turned on in world war ii and it's never been shut off and we have industries now like boeing that are dependent upon conflict and they have to have a conflict somewhere right (laughs) and um i think it's such a shame because we're capable of so much more love on this planet but that's how one thing simple to do and there's a lot of good ideas like that you know we could boycott some of these defense industries so that so that they don't get money to to you know to for weapons to hurt people i mean that's another thing too but um but i think you have a fantastic idea and I'll do everything I can to support it, to help it. I think it's great. It's th- it's time has come. Tammy, do we have time for me to make some comments on um, uh, what Ted said? I, I have some real responses to it. Yes. And Ted, can you tell the listeners the name of your radio station? Sure. It's called Out of This World Radio. Okay. I started it 10 years ago on the advice of two homeless people who were actually angels. I was between jobs at the time, didn't quite know what to do with myself. I've been raised, I was raised in a psychic family, 
and they said you need to start a radio show and start writing books and then i looked around and they disappeared on me so one thing after the other i started my own show and i've been broadcasting every week now for over over 10 years uh it's uh um, you can look me up at www.tedmahr.com. And then I broadcast on about 12 other social media sites, Rumble, Brighteon, BitChute, CloudHub, uh, Liberty in Canada, um, a whole bunch of them. And um, I've, and Facebook, I've okay. been doing that now for 10 years. So, and then and my- What's especially nice, Ted, about you, um, you know, you're dealing in the kind of things that could get your vote canceled quite easily. Uh, all the sort of things you would call woo woo, but yeah. you, you're you're not out in the ethers. You're here in this world as it is, bringing in however you do it, understandings, and you know your 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 perspective is so intelligent that we can kind of like go, okay, I'm not going to cancel his vote for being in that woo woo stuff, you know. So it's it's really a pleasure you. you know to 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 listen to you because all the things you're saying are I, I'm 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 right there with you. Um, well, thank you. Uh, let's see, I I had oh response. I wanted to make some response to that idea of um, uh, the healing power of prayer. You might say, um, Larry Dossi, uh, one of my you know great loving wonderful. Uh, uh, people I admire. I did a podcast with, I used to do a podcast too. It was too labor intensive. I, I just couldn't keep doing it, but he, he was one of my guests. And, you know, thanks to Larry, uh, over at the time, I don't know the count now, but uh, somewhat like something like a hundred medical schools were teaching the power of prayer in medical schools because wow. there was so much research scientific research that showed that it actually you could affect things like like that and that's one of the things if i you know if you were doing my map you definitely would be using that uh love your enemies uh uh we actually had a project with the scientific and medical network that didn't come to fruition but had a lot of work put on it for a uh, daily minute of silence to go around the globe in the same time, you know, in every time zone uh, where you focused on kindness. Uh, kindness was a, a specific thing you could think of doing something kind rather than the idea of love, you know, because that is that's love in action. And if we had this coalition for the good, we would definitely be putting our joint uh you know, meditative intention for the world out there. And it could be incredibly powerful. You know, I, it does, it's not just, you know, pie in the sky. Um, so that that's definitely in the agenda for the, in the, the world that, you know, to create the world we'd like to be in. Can I give you a suggestion? Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a, there's a hospital I visited in West Rajasthan, in, in Western India, it's near the border with Gujarat and Pakistan, and it's called the uh, BK Kamara, um, BK Kamari's, uh, it's, it's a hospital there, a charitable hospital, and the director believes in the power of meditation to heal and love, too. So every every day <clears throat> on the hour, they, they start playing meditation music, and they ask everyone to stop with whatever they're doing. Now, if you're in surgery, it'd be a little difficult. Mm -hmm. but uh surgery stop and meditate for three minutes on love and healing for their patients in the world huh. and and they have phenomenal a really phenomenal healing rate there and people come in and study it all it's very simple you'll hear this meditation beautiful meditation music in the background every hour on the hour 11 a.m noon one two three four five and it's a regular work day like from nine to five i know the director i interviewed him some years ago on my show and it's very successful can you pass have, along the, some info to me so that sure. I know about that? That is totally wonderful. I, that is just one of the most wonderful things I've heard. Oh. He 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 so would much. love, I'm sure he'd love to talk to you both. And he's been very successful too. And governments love him. They give him all kinds of money. He gets all kinds of donations. And the nice thing is nothing, if you don't have money, they treat you for free. And just ask mm -hmm. for a donation. But isn't it wonderful that for free we can all use that power of intention, power of prayer, <coughs> power of collective thought, right. 
uh, it doesn't cost anything. <laughs> Nothing. No. Really. Love, love is free. Yeah. Love is free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, not quite the free, the free love of the '60s, but it, but it is in a good, in a good way, <laughs> uh, to bring the planet into alignment to a higher uh, plane, because that's where we're headed. You know. You know. Quickly, please. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you both for this time and the reminder of that yes. that love is action and yeah. it comes through as compassionate acts and kindness for all sentient beings. Mm -hmm. And the that prayer and meditation are so very powerful. Thank you very much, Suzanne and Ted, for being here today. Oh, it's been so much fun. And let's stay in touch afterwards. My email is um out of this world radio at protonmail.com. Great. So uh, I've, I was just writing you a letter when I discovered the, the Zoom link. Uh, and so I'll, I'll, I'll finish my, le my email to you. <laughs> so. You know you glow, Ted. Oh, really? Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you do. Oh, thank <laughs> you. i got to get a better camera so I can glow a little too. It's, it's, it's <laughs> angelic light. It's angelic light. Thank you.